The Puerto Rico Air State Guard, and they're known here as the first air base group, are exceptionally valuable to our wing. It'd be very difficult for us to execute our mission of readiness and compliance without the State Guard helping us. Our mission, provide mission capable airmen as a force multiplier to the Puerto Rico Air National Guard for its non-combat mission, domestic operations, and defense support of civil authorities mission. To operate and maintain Muniz Air National Guard Base and provide support to all units operating there upon mobilization and deployment of the 156th Airlift Wing. We prepare the base for the different plans or contingency plans in case of uh, emergencies like such as uh, weather emergencies uh, like tornadoes or hurricanes, any kind of uh, attack let's say uh, weapons of mass destruction, um, chemical attacks from uh, insur insurgents. So we pretty much run the, the plans and how to keep the mission continue, like any kind of uh, emergency like that, like nice. weather or combat situation. They are our support. They are our backbone. In the meaning of, uh, to give you an example, if we are to be deployed, they are the ones who are going to be running our program here. They are the ones who are going to take care of everything we do while we are gone. So they're not only a, 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 state, guard, a state guard group, they are our backbone. We are united. That's why we train together. Every single drill, we work together. They do and they know the same thing we do. So they, they have the same knowledge at the same level as we do. So they are part of us. We don't, we don't see them, we don't treat them as a separate unit. They are, they are part of the National Guard. They are part of our flight. They're here because they want to. So they bring all the knowledge, they bring all the, the enthusiasm to work with us. So th that, that's a plus. Second of all, all these guys, they are professionals in the civilian life. We got people like here, Senior Eman Gonzalez, he works as an EM or emergency manager outside for the civilian job. Uh, that's his actual job, daily job. So he brings his knowledge to us. So right now inspection, the air, um, the masks, um, all the rings, because this device you need ready 24 hours a day, you know. All, every month I need to inspection the equipment because um, this, this is life. This is my uh, fifth to um, defend on my, my 156 um, family. I am, I am Air State guy. guy. They are a pretty incredible group. When you look at the range of experience they have, it's absolutely amazing. Anywhere from uh, doctors, legal, you name it across the board. If there's a domestic operation or a natural disaster, I'm glad to have them with us training goal to increase personnel qualifications and preparedness by identifying, motivating, and enrolling them in their required AFSC qualification, military professional development, and emergency management courses, and to conduct meaningful and realistic training. We train together because we are going to be their support when they are deployed. So we have to train as they train because we have to be ready to do their job when they are deployed. So we have to have the same training as them. We recently got our arms qualification. So uh, we have training in arms and M9, M4, also uh, handcuffing techniques, searching techniques. Uh, accident avoidance, uh, vehicle inspection. Uh, we have a lot of variety of, of trainings in the area of security and also in the safety, bleeding control, because if we have someone in our unit that got uh, a shot or got hurt, we, we need to know how, how to react to that. So we participated in an active shooter um, exercise in the Veterans Affairs Hospital. So we uh, participate as security forces. So that was a great experience for all of us to participate in that kind of exercise, to be prepared uh, for an active shooter incident in the base or in, 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 in any area. Vision, become the premier Air State Guard unit 
of the nation. As you know, we're in a resource constrained environment at the federal level and any of this type of volunteer units we can get to include Civil Air Patrol, who are now part of the total force, is very helpful. The Puerto Rico Air State Guard are actually governed under USC Title 32 as a state defense force. While they don't have a federal status per se, they report to the governor and they're a state defense force. They are, under the AFI, eligible to augment us in certain applicable missions and they do so brilliantly. These state guard members bring amazing professional credentials from the civilian sector. Many of them are engineers, doctors, nurses. They have lots of credentials that they can bring to bear for the base. And because they've been sanctioned and authorized by the governor through that Title 32 process I described, they're able to do certain parts of our missions. There's other parts they can't do because of AFIs and federal rules, and we're very sensitive to that. But I tell you what, they maximize every capability for us. The Civil Air Patrol has a very long history of uh, important mission sets for the United States Air Force. Uh, the last Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Mark Welch, uh, led an effort to include the Civil Air Patrol as an official member of the total force. Because not every state, not every community has an Air State Guard, Puerto Rico is lucky to be one of them that does have it, but because not every state has an Air State Guard, there hasn't been an effort at the national level to include them in that total force. So you have the Civil Air Patrol who do very valuable missions for us and their link back to the Air Force is through the CAP USAF, Civil Air Patrol United States Air Force out of Maxwell, as well as First Air Force, uh, which is based in Florida. So Civil Air Patrol is a really good part of the total force. They're also on our base and a big partner. But you have the Air State Guard that don't have those federal connections. By blending the two units, and by blending it, what I mean is they will have joint membership in each. Member of the Air State Guard would also hold credentials and membership in the Civil Air Patrol. And of course, they would be vetted through all the same Civil Air Patrol processes that currently exist. But that dual membership, just like in the Air National Guard, we're dual members of our state and our federal force, starts to open up doors for us and great advantages. When those State Guard members serve in their Civil Air Patrol status, they then become, by definition, part of the official total force. There's a lot of advantages to doing that. Some of them involve when we move out and deploy. We're able to bring Civil Air Patrol with us on certain types of missions, search and rescue, support, supply missions, where the AFIs don't necessarily cover or permit the State Guard to do that. By having the State Guard in the Civil Air Patrol, however, it allows us to tap the Civil Air Patrol legally and then make use of all that great experience and credentials that the State Guard brings. So it's really the best of both worlds. They have a military uh, posture, they have military duties, uh, and uh, within the AFI reg, uh, we use them throughout any of our missions, and uh, they are invaluable to us.